Hello everybody, this is Gary. Today is Tuesday, May 5th, 2020. It is 2.13 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in Rochester, New York, in the United States. And this is just a quick check-in to check in on how I'm doing with my mental illness and dealing with the isolation of coronavirus. I'm doing pretty good today. Um, pretty calm, relaxed. Um, just finished doing some meditation. I meditate because it helps me concentrate my mind and calm me down. Um, there are plenty of different meditation videos on YouTube. Um, and a lot of uh, guided imagery type meditation, um, musical meditation. There's all kinds of meditations on YouTube to, med to meditate to. I didn't want to start meditation without letting my psychiatrist know that I was doing it because I didn't know if it would be harmful to me as a person with schizophrenia to um, do guided imagery type meditation and self-hypnosis. Um, my psychiatrist said, as long as I felt okay while I was doing it, it was okay by him. Um, so I do a lot of meditation. I do it three times a day, once in the morning when I wake up, once in the afternoon. And once when I go to bed, and it does help calm me down. Um, it doesn't necessarily get rid of the paranoia, the voices, the visual hallucinations, um, but I think it helps a lot with anxiety and to some extent with depression. Um, uh, my next appointment with my psychiatrist is on, uh, I believe, the 14th of May. It's going to be, as far as I know, a telephone teleconference visit, not an in-person visit. Um, I have an appointment with my primary care, um, I think in June or July, early July. I'm not sure if that's going to be a telephone conference appointment or an in-person appointment because I don't know how long these coronavirus restrictions are going to apply to my medical and psychiatric clinic. Um, right now, they're, as far as I know, they're just doing uh, telephone conferences, or they're using things like FaceTime and Zoom to do video teleconferencing for all psychiatric and medical appointments. Um, but anyways, I'm doing all right. I just wanted to talk about politics real quick. Um, ben Shapiro, who's an Orthodox Jew and a conservative commentator, is absolutely right when he says, the economy can't stay locked down forever. People can't hide in their houses forever. At some point, you're going to have to open up the economy and open up businesses. Right now, New York State still has some of the toughest restrictions on businesses and people in public wearing masks, um, what they should be going outside for, and restrictions on movement. Um, but eventually, New York State's going to have to reopen. And we're going to have to reopen while we're practicing social distancing, wearing masks, but still letting people go to back to work, get their jobs back, get their businesses back. That's my phone. I decided not to answer it while I'm doing this video. We'll just have to leave a message. It might be about uh, an apartment that I want to find to rent. I put a, a ad in Craigslist saying that I'm looking for a new apartment because I want to get out of the apartment that I'm in now. My neighbors are noisy and nosy, and uh, I just want to move to a studio or a one bedroom apartment. Here for the studio, I'm paying $625 a month, and I want to get an apartment that costs less than that. I would have to probably go move into a different part of the city of Rochester. I'm not planning to uh, move out to the suburbs. I lived in Brockport, which is on the rural suburban outlie of Rochester, New York, and I was there for about six years. Um, but I don't want to live that far away from the city again, because it's about 20, 30 miles out, maybe more. Um, it's a pretty long bus ride or car drive to get into the city from Broadport. 
But um, like I was saying, Ben Shapiro says you can't keep the economy closed for the next six months, the next year. That's not workable. People are going to start going outside and they're going to start defying work restrictions and business restrictions and movement restrictions. People are not made to stay indefinitely alone in their apartments and houses. That's just not rational. So we can open up business, as Ben Shapiro says, by limiting the movements of people who are vulnerable, people who are elderly, people with underlying conditions should stay home and take precautions and stay self-isolated, but allow younger, healthy workers to go back to work, business owners to go back to business and reopen the economy because the economy has its own death toll in suicides, drug abuse, and other psychiatric problems that can lead to injury or death. Um, so you can't trade off um, trying to control coronavirus with having people committed su committing suicide because they, their business failed and they can't get it running again, even with government assistance. So as Ben Shapiro says, you can't lock down everything indefinitely. People don't work that way. The United States can't work that way. And it just doesn't make any sense to expect everything to be closed forever. And you got to expect that when uh, we open new business, there may be an increase in coronavirus um, cases. It may be an increase in coronavirus deaths. But the whole point of the lockdown was not to get rid of the coronavirus, but just make the medical establishment in the emergency rooms, intensive care units, to have more equipment and more uh, resources to deal with people coming into the hospital. It was never meant to actually get rid of coronavirus because that's not physically possible. So Ben Shapiro was saying that we need to keep the vulnerable at home, the young, the elderly, people with pre-existing conditions. I'm 54, I smoke cigarettes. If I got coronavirus, it would attack my lungs more because my lungs are not as healthy as a non-smoker. Um, so I would abide by restrictions like staying in my apartment or um, going out to different businesses wearing a face mask like a store or a pharmacy, grocery store, or to the bank. My bank, by the way, is still closed. They only have the drive through window open. And if you want an appointment with a banker, you have to make an appointment in advance. But the main lobby of my bank's are all closed. I use key bag. Um, but uh, um, you can't keep everything closed down indefinitely. That doesn't work. Um, I got distracted because my neighbors are fucking noisy. They're yelling and screaming um, at each other. But um, we have to reopen the economy in New York State at some point. And like I said, it's restricting people who are elderly and vulnerable, nursing homes, um, increasing testing as much as possible. But however we do it, we need to reopen New York State. We need to reopen business. We need to reopen business across the country. There are protests, and rightfully so, against the closures of businesses, the closures of um, public places like parks and beaches. People can go outside and do all those things, work, go to beaches, go to parks, go to stores, as long as they're social distancing, as long as they're wearing masks, that will help control the rise and increase in coronavirus. And um, so being socially responsible while opening business is the main point that Ben Shapiro made. Um, he said he trusts the American people to do what's right, um, include so including social distancing and wearing masks. Ben Shapiro said the American people are basically smart and intelligent and responsible and will follow, um, you know, social distancing guidelines. And businesses like restaurants will open up with social distancing rules. The waitresses and the waiters might wear masks. The people who come into the restaurant might have to wear masks. There might have to be more space between the tables for social distancing. So you can reopen businesses and have the social distancing rules in place and minimize the number of increased 
um, cases of coronavirus um, until we reach herd immunity, which means a whole lot of people have been exposed to the virus and they recovered from it. And therefore, the vast majority of people will end up having immunity against the virus because it seems, as Ben, Sh ben Shapiro points out, that the young, like say, under the age of 50, who don't have pre-existing conditions are very unlikely to die from coronavirus. They're even somewhat unlikely to even get sick from it. And that the whole point of reopening is letting people get exposed to the virus, let them build up natural immunity or get the same type of immunity from a vaccine if one is forthcoming. President Trump said there might be a vaccine towards the end of the year because they're fast tracking several different vaccines through testing and, and uh, tri clinical trials phases and things like that. Um, but uh, we can't keep everything closed down forever. That's just not possible. That doesn't make any sense. So um, comment, like, subscribe, share. Um, if you like my videos, you don't have to send me money to make these videos. I don't ask for making money to make these videos. Um, you can uh, um, simply share my videos on social network sites and um, uh, press the notification bell so you know when to get new videos that I put out. And if you have any suggestions for a video topic you want me to do, go ahead and put that in the comment section. I don't edit or eliminate comments. I don't uh, censor people like that. I believe in free speech. So if you have something to say, say it in the comment section and press that notification bell and take care of yourselves and each other.